it sounds great. So what went wrong? I mean, when you when we talk about uh, the Trump uh, connection is emblematic of what went wrong. What was it that went wrong at Deutsche Bank? Well, what went wrong is that starting in the mid to late 90s, a succession of top executives, none more so than Joe Ackerman, who was the CEO from 2002 to 2012, just completely lost sight of any, they, 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 they stopped having anything resembling a long-term view of the business. They began operating with an obsessive and singular focus on short-term profits. And that sounds simple and it sounds kind of obvious, but it took over the bank. And Can you give me an example? Yeah, like so, so Ackerman in, I think, 2003 decided, he, he became CEO and he decided that the way to increase Deutsche Bank's stock price in the short term was to substantially increase the bank's return on equity. So okay. that's basically the profits that go to shareholders, essentially. And it was in at that moment, I believe it was 4% the return on equity, which is a very low number. <laughs> yes. uh, and he wanted it within two or three years to hit 25%. 25%. So he wanted to go up sixfold. And that's, you know, look, 4% is very low, and but 25% is very high, especially for a financial institution that's supposed to be playing this kind of intermediary role in the financial system and the economy. That's, that's- And a, especially given the size of its balance sheet as yeah, well. It's, that's, and given how, achieving something like that in the space of 24, 36 months requires like stepping on the gas isn't really the right analogy. It's like turning on like the 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 rocket engines right. and uh, and then like tossing some like I don't know explosives in there with it and seeing what happens. And that's basically what happened. Deutsche Bank, first of all, they achieved these milestones on the schedule, uh, on Ackerman's schedule, which was oh, quite yeah. impressive. Uh -huh. But they did it at a very expensive long-term proposition, which was that they stopped investing in anything that cost money. And it, they, so that means they stopped investing in technology. Their internal technology systems, as they hired teams of traders and sales guys, and as they made acquisitions, they went from having a, a small handful of technology systems to having several hundred, probably more than a thousand technology systems inside the bank. And these are computer systems that don't talk to each other, so it becomes almost impossible if you ask a, a, sim, a seemingly simple question like, what is Deutsche Bank's exposure to, I don't know, Greece? There's no answer, right? Or there is an answer. There's just no way to figure out what the answer is, which is a terrifying prospect for if you're a bank CFO or if you're an investor in a bank or if you're a regulator of a bank. They didn't invest in compliance, and so there were because it's compliance and anti-money laundering staffs. Those are cost centers. They they're expensive to hire. They're expensive to train. And they literally cost you business. Their job is to say no to transactions. And if you're trying year after year, quarter after quarter to hit these very aggressive profit milestones, that that just gets in the way. I, I think the most important thing though is that the financial incentives up and down the hierarchy at the bank change very rapidly to reward this short-term return on equity goal. And it, the way that would happen is that bankers, traders, and just like even, even someone working in a Deutsche Bank branch in the middle of Germany, they no longer were just doing business with whomever seemed like a good credit risk. They were told to evaluate all relationships on the basis of a simple question, which was, will this relationship or this transaction generate a 25% return for the bank? Right. And most don't, right? Generally, banks are not earning 25% returns on normal transactions, nor should they be, by the way. I mean, that that's- That's a huge number for a state uh, business. Yeah, and and it means that they're either drastically overcharging their customers, which just isn't gonna work because their customers will go to a bank that's charging lower fees or lower interest rates, or it requires you, and this is the path that the bank ultimately took, to rip off your customers, to break the law, to act without any sense of ethics, and that is exactly what they did. And the seeds were sown for this great kind of catastrophic parade of financial scandals that the, banks, the bank years later would find itself immersed in, and at the time, that was a direct result of people, again, up and down the hierarchy, being told, this is serious. You need to achieve these targets. You're, you yourself, your group, your team, your division, the company needs to hit these targets, or else Joe Ackerman, who has this terrifying temper and has a tendency at times of calling people out in public for their failures, 
is going to potentially fire you or humiliate you or just get extremely angry at you. And, and financial incentives within the bank were changed so that people's compensation was based on hitting these targets. And humans respond to incentives. I and mean, that's simple and I think also probably the most important determinant of success or right. failure within these institutions. People are made, given financial incentives and they respond to those incentives in fairly predictable ways. And in this case, the incentives were clear. It was to maximize short-term profits, do not worry about the next quarter or the next year, much less five years down the road. Hit the targets now or else. And, and you know, that reminds me, as you say that, just as an aside of Wells Fargo and all the things yep. that we know about uh, what happened with regard to the fake uh, accounts yeah. and things like that. You incentivize a certain behavior and sometimes you get those kinds of, uh, of outcomes. Yeah, it turns out that if you're telling p branch managers that you need to open X number of accounts in a month or a quarter, they're going to do th that. They're going to do it. <laughs> and they're not going to, and if you're not incentivizing them not to break the law or rip off their customers or act unethically, this is very simple human psychology. It's not even human psychology, it's basic economics, right? You're going to, when you reward people for behaving in a certain way, they, all else being equal, will behave in that certain way.